<laughs> okay, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Okay. Wait. Okay. <laughs> oh, wait, that's backwards now. That's not supposed to be right. Okay, it's season 10. Mama's copper, Mama Copper's Marinara Sauce. So, okay, so you just have no idea what I'm dealing with here now, people. Because now, having gone from a simple production where it was me just making stuff up, shooting it on my phone, I've now got laptops. I have two mini iPads. Like I've got Zoom. I'm not sure how I feel about Zooming this, but you know, some some of this is necessary. Anyway, can you believe it? Season ten. Never in a million years would I would have predicted that I would have ten seasons of a cooking show, but I was thinking about that earlier today. Like, if I could start from the beginning again, I would rebrand the whole the whole thing. And it wouldn't be cooking with Liz. It would be teaching Liz to cook or Liz cooks, you follow, I don't know. It just, it feels like, you know, uh, it's all about the learning, right? Liz learns to cook. Liz learns. I like the sound of that as my future TV show or maybe my future uh, cookbook. Anyway, so here we are. Um, yeah, it's season 10. And you know, I think I held this up already. No, I don't understand why this is backwards. Oh my God, so much learning. Anyway, uh, here's what we're doing today. We are doing Mama Capra's uh, marinara sauce. Because remember, the whole focus of cooking with Liz is to learn things that are staples that you would make over and over again. And my dear, dear friend, Mark Capra, you know, who is such a great cook, um, he would often make for me Mama Capra's marinara. But I have a couple things I want to say first, because um, before we get into, you know, episode one is a way, the premiere is the reading of the recipe, because I'm not so good at the reading of the recipe. I don't take in really what I need, uh, ingredient wise or equipment wise. So I learned that. Like, okay, it's 10 seasons in. I, I learned to pay attention to um, all of the steps. All, every single step apparently is important in recipes. It's just not the way I worked in real life. Uh, so um, a couple of things I wanna comment on is at the season nine uh, finale, Catherine made the most, the most helpful suggestion which is now that I'm working from my laptop instead of my phone on a tripod, that the best way to um, hold the laptop is FabFitFun boxes. So you know, FabFitFun has been a sponsor of Satellite Sisters podcast uh, for a long time. So Catherine, that is really awesome. Okay, let me show you that I'm actually doing that. Hold on, you know, here we go. Here we go. We're, we're looking at FabFitFun boxes here. Uh, okay, so so Catherine, bravo, you solved a major production problem for, for cooking with Liz. And, um, and I thank you. Uh, so that would be great. Now, Emily noted that I am making good use of the sticky notes and that, um, that 3M should be happy about that. So I don't know, Emily, should I get 3M on the blower? I've kind of been waiting for, um, for Crate and Barrel, of course, for Crate and Barrel. Uh, but whatever, you know, um, if anyone knows anyone at 3M and they would like to sponsor my <laughs> sponsor my wall, you know where to find me. Uh, and then Lucille also mentioned after the uh, season nine finale 
that maybe at the very beginning of all of this, there should have been a kitchen shower for me. And I never really thought about this before, Lucille. I've never had a shower of any kind. Now, I'm not asking for one because, you know, during the current unpleasantness, people just need to take care of you. I don't need anyone to take care of me. I'm here. I'm fine. I'm very grateful to, that I have the life that I do. But a kitchen shower would have been a great idea, Lucille. So I just wanted to mention that. Um, okay. So now, so we're reading through the recipe of Mama Capra's marinara sauce. So here we go. Hold on. I'm going to, you know, got the mini iPad here. But first, this is another first on Cooking with Liz. I'm actually going to invite, uh, hold on. I'm going to invite Mark Capra in to help, to help me go through Mama Capra. This is his mother's, or is it your grandmother's? Anyway, Mark Capra is going to join us here on a season premiere. This is Satellite Sister, Mark Capra, hello. Hi, Tom, how are you Liz? <laughs> Mark, it looks like you have sponsors. What is happening there? <laughs> what do you mean? This is my my kitchen. This is every Italian man has a great kitchen, you know? Okay. All right. So hang on one second. I'm going to make one change. Okay, there. So now I see us side by side. I hope everyone you look so colorful. Wow, well, you really you know, I'm here in my Italian colors for today because I've got my green pants on and my red shirt. <laughs> For Mama Capra's Italian marinara sauce. You know, you know how much you know how much I love your cooking, but also I love Mama Capra. I think you know, wasn't I at her 90th birthday party? I mean, she yeah, she's 95 and living upstairs and doing well, and she sends her love and great success with this recipe. She's all excited. Oh, oh Mama Capra. And, okay. and I would say, Liz, though, one, one thing I'm very excited about is that actually I like the name of your show, Cooking with Liz, because our relationship over the last 30 years has always been cooking for Liz. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really enjoying that, this new turn of events, yeah? I, that, is, that is very true. I cannot even dispute that. I mean, people who were paying close attention to Cooking with Liz will notice that in the thread on my previous live broadcasts, you ha you had been mocking me throughout all of the previous seasons. So well, now all in good just. You know I love you. <laughs> I know, I know you do. And now you're gonna you're gonna I've I've watched you make this so many times, but I have never tried it myself. So okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just talk through the recipe. It looks like you have some product samples you're trying to shill there. So I'm already. Okay, so here we go. Hold on. I'm opening up again. It's all so much technology. Okay, so the first ingredients, uh, two 28 ounce cans of Italian old tomatoes. It's a San Marzano here. So that's the now, brand? Well, San Marzano is a type of Italian tomato and they're actually grown at the, the base of Mount Vesuvius in clay. So they have less water in them and they tend to be sweeter. So they make the best Italian sauces, if you could find them. Now, unfortunately, today I went to my grocery store and they didn't have San Marzano. But you could find them in most yeah. of them. So we'll make do with whole tomatoes. Okay. Canned tomatoes. Okay. Okay. So <laughs> hang on. I just realized because of the way I'm looking at you, I am not seeing any of the comments on the Facebook page. So I'm just going to try to call that up this is so much technology oh, oh i don't know what i just did there now okay here's facebook over here okay all right here we go uh there we go oh my god we really look good in this okay all right i i feel like this is a whole nother leap forward for cooking with liz that we're doing okay live instruction so hang on. it's a bi-coastal <laughs> it is you're in new york city right so okay so um Okay, so we've got the we've got the whole tomatoes, we've got the garlic cloves, you know, I've got I've got plenty of those. So I'm good on that. And I use quite a lot of garlic. I'm not afraid of garlic. You are not afraid of garlic. Okay, so, now I now I have to go back. Hold on. Now I'm not seeing you except in the delayed Facebook thing. So I gotta find out. Okay, I gotta go back. Gotta go to Zoom. 
gotta, oh my God, this is complicated. Ah, wait, oh, don't do that. Okay, wait, so whatever. Okay, <laughs> so I can't, all right, we're just gonna go on. Um, okay. okay, fresh basil. Now the recipe you have here says nice handful. What is a nice handful? A nice handful is a nice handful. <laughs> I have no judgment about this. I got big hands, so I use a lot of basil, right? But I yep. think it's, you know, it's it, like all good Italian cooking, it's hard to measure precisely. It's really to the taste. So okay. a nice handful is I'm not shy with garlic or I'm sh not shy with basil. Uh, so, you know, you do it to your own taste, but I think like that amount is good, John. Okay, well, that sounds to me like you're counting on my judgment, which, as we've proven in the previous nine seasons, is not excellent. But okay, moving on. Uh, Italian olive oil, I have. Red pepper flakes, I have. A quarter cup vodka, I have. Because remember, I made that delicious cocktail a couple of seasons ago, and that uh, Tom Collins from Ina Garden. But for people that want to leave out the vodka, Mark, because some people want to do that, is there a substitute for that, or do they just ditch the vodka? Yeah, the red wine. The red wine. Okay, well, I'm saying people did, that don't want wine or vodka in, in their sauce. Is there any alternative? Um, no, but you know the alcohol burns off. So you're okay. not getting any of the alcohol if you don't like alcohol. Uh, it just gives it, it just mellows and rounds the overall flavors. Okay. Um, Mama Capra only uses vodka. I've interpreted it and I've added some red wine. Okay. So I like both, but it still works without it. It just gives it a fuller, rounder flavor with it. In. And don't worry about the, it gets burned off. Okay. I'm, I'm learning so much already. Okay. So then we have... Well, I lost your audio there for a second. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> okay, so then we have some sugar. It says generous amount of salt and pepper. I've really learned that the hard way in previous episodes that gen salt and pepper is really the key to everything, isn't it? It is, you, you know, you can't, you, you, and again, it's to taste. I use a lot of salt, but you know, you're, you're tasting as you're going along and you'll, you'll find the right salt moment. Okay. You know what I have not been doing? is tasting as I go along. I think that's, people who are natural cooks know to do that. What I've been doing is just following the recipe and assuming that's perfect. So if you're a good Italian cook, if you've been tasting as you're going along, by the time dinner is ready, you're not hungry anymore. Okay. <laughs> that's a good rule of thumb. Okay. All right. So um, we have a generous amount of salt and paper, and then we get into the um, the pasta. So you, this was not part of the original assignment. I was just making the sauce, but you want me to make some linguine here, huh? Well, you have to put the sauce on something. Actually, this sauce yeah. is yeah. very versatile. Okay. You can put it on any kind of pasta. I tend to prefer linguine. Spaghetti works. Penne works. Any kind of pasta. Okay. But the sauce also works on some fish. It works on some zucchini, some cooked zucchini as vegetables. Oh, it's, a very, um, yeah. it's a very versatile sauce that you could use all week long with different things to just give it a, a little bit of a spice. Okay, now is it true that there's a there's the marinara sauce and then there's what Italian families call Sunday sauce and that's two yeah. different things? Sunday sauce is a, a different thing. Sunday sauce uses a lot of the same ingredients, but they also use tomato paste. Oh. And tomato paste makes the sauce much thicker and you tend to blend the whole sauce so that there's no like little chunks of tomato in it. Oh. And then it's, you tend to eat it with meat, like meatballs and sausage and oh. brisole. But um, marinara sauce is a much lighter, simpler sauce that could accompany anything. Lighter, simpler. I like the sound of that. Okay, no. so we're going with that. And then, so now let's go. So th those are the ingredients along with some cheese. So I'll get to, we're going to get to that at the end. Now let's go through the steps because what I've learned in cooking with Liz is that I start and then I realize I don't have any of the right equipment, Mark. I mean, you've been in my kitchen, you know. It's yeah, it's um, it's it's a little lacking, but I see it's improving over the course of ten seasons. It is. It is. I've, I've tried. I've invested in some knives, some things, some, yeah. So measuring cups, 
Measuring cups were a life changer. So, um, okay. So I'm just going to go through the steps and you can, you can warn me about anything that's easy to do wrong. Okay. okay. So the first thing I do is heat the large pot with olive oil. Now my large pot, hang on. Uh, so this is just like, this is what you're talking about with large pot, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, that would work. I mean, probably for this amount of sauce with the two cans of tomato, you probably don't need quite as big a pot. I mean, okay. but what's great about this recipe is very flexible. So you can scale it up and make enough for like a week. Yeah, that would work. For this amount, <laughs> that would work. I like trying out various pots on you and getting an immediate ruling. Yeah, okay, so I, uh, thumbs up. Yeah, it's like the Coliseum with, with the pots are positive here. Okay, so we got the large pot, then we got the we got the tomatoes, the basil, the sugar, the red pepper, the vodka, the red wine, that's all going in the pot. I bring that to a boil. Then it says after one hour, use a potato masher. I would that came as a big surprise, Mark. Well, like a potato masher to mash the whole tomatoes. So, okay. So you may have seen in my chickpea stew, I used this kind of masher, but I no. do. <laughs> I do own a more conventional potato masher. That is exactly it, Liz. Look at that. You have it. It's a potato masher. What are the chances? <laughs> Amazing. What are the chances that I would have two mashers and one of them suited your requirements? Okay. Okay. So we got that. So then we're so we're doing some mashing. And we don't don't overmash. You know, you lightly mash till you break up all the tomatoes. Okay. Again. That's another thing that calls for judgment in the moment. Italian cooking is a lot of judgment. It's yeah. not so precise. Mm -hmm. I know. Yeah, well, we'll just see how that goes, won't we? <laughs> okay, so then I'm cooking the linguine, al dente, blah, blah, blah. Add two to three ladles of sauce. Now, I have a few things I want to say about ladles. Okay. Last season with the chickpea stew, as I was pouring things into things, I was using the Betty, right? I got my Betty Crocker spoon and a number of people commented, including my sister, Julie, that, gee, it's a shame that Liz doesn't have a ladle. But you know what? I did have a ladle. That's I, a ladle. I just forgot to reach for it. You know, there's so much going on, especially when you're live. So is this a good enough ladle for what you're talking that, about? That, that'll work. That's a good enough ladle. I mean. In a, a real Italian kitchen, you will have two or three different size ladles, but that ladle is all purpose and I think it'll work perfectly for this recipe. Okay, all right. So, so we got the ladle. So that's a huge relief because when I saw in the comments last week that I hadn't used the ladle for ladling, it's like, it's just, I'm trying to do so much here, Mark. You know, it's a lot to learn all in one go. Okay, so I've got the potato masher, I've got the ladle. Then, oh, the, okay, then, so I'm serving it on individual plates, but then I'm topping with grated Romano or, or Parmesan cheese. So I had one last equipment um, question for you. I don't really have a traditional cheese grater, but if you've been watching, you'll see that I bought a zester as a wrap gift for myself. Can I zest the cheese or do I need a traditional grater? You know, it would work. In a crunch, that will work. But mm -hmm. I think that you're going to love this sauce so much as, as it is going to become a staple of yours. That's I would cool. invest in a more traditional, it's fairly similar, just yeah. a little bit wider, and it'll make it a little bit easier. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Is that what you have? This is my zester, but it's like, I don't know the difference between a zester and a grater. See, I, I wouldn't call that a zester. I would call that a grater. But I, I think it's just a little bit wider, so that'll work. Okay. Okay. All right. So I'm going to zest. I'm going to. I'm going to zest the cheese. So there you go. Great. So so that's good. Okay. So then, uh, yeah. So so that's the thing. Now on the side, you, you also gave me a recipe for um, a Caesar salad, a classic Caesar salad, which I have yeah. had. I've had that at your home. I just want to say one thing about the Caesar salad. Uh, Although a Caesar salad is not really an Italian dish. You know where it comes from. No. It actually comes from Mexico, from Alcapoco, Mexico. There really? was a great chef there. I, I think his name was Caesar somebody, obviously. And it was Caesar salad. Not Caesar salad, Mexico. but Caesar something. 
<laughs> but it goes very well with Italian food. So okay, we've, ad we've adopted it. All right. Well, I looked at I looked at the recipe, which I will post in the Facebook group, and I realized this is where. Is that backwards to you? I don't know. Anyway, I thought about the whole, this is where the concept of the larder comes in or what some people call the pantry, but I like to call Liz's larder because it sounds better. That almost everything in that recipe, I already had. So this, okay. this is the advantage to people that like cook with some frequency as opposed to me. It used to be that every time I went to cook something, I had to buy every single thing in the recipe. But now like, I've got it. I don't have anchovies and I would need fresh romaine, but everything else in that recipe, I actually already own here. So that's you amazing. You have a Caesar salad at any moment you feel like it. Yep. Wouldn't that be exciting in life to just have a Caesar just make, make your own Caesar whenever you feel like it? Ah, life is good. The joys of life. Okay. So, but you and I, you and I have had many fantastic meals together over the years. As you say, you know, we've known each other for like a ridiculous amount of time. Did you say 30 years? Is that right? We met in our 20s. 30, 30 years. And I must say this, that other than my husband, because he'd get very angry if I did say this, <laughs> you're my very favorite person to travel with. To travel with. Mm -hmm. We seem to get into a lot of trouble that's related to food. <laughs> and I, actually, I remember one story like that actually has all to do with this marinara sauce. Uh, we took ourselves to, when I was living in Thailand, we yeah. decided to book ourselves into a spa for five days that had a very strict vegetarian, low calorie, you know, with a lot of exercise, a lot of pampering. And we did very well for the third, two or three days. Two or three days at least. We did really well for two or three days. Really well. Really, really well. I, I mean, I just, the weight just fell off of me. <laughs> and then by the fourth day, I couldn't take it anymore. And I talked you into, with a couple of our friends, the breaking out of the spa and ha uh, like hitchhiking a ride into town to an Italian restaurant for a plate of pasta with marinara sauce. Yeah. Now, unfortunately, the only problem was the owner of the spa was sitting at the table across the hill and gave us a really hard time for having <laughs> broken the walls. And I said, yeah, but what are you doing? You're here. <laughs> Fair enough. Yeah. yeah. So marinara sauce has quite a, a history with us. You know? I know. Once you, once you've busted out of a spa with someone, you just have so much in common for the rest of your life. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I did see. Uh, you mentioned your husband. I did notice that Wallace was on Facebook about a month ago, like hand making real Brazilian caipirinhas, the ultimate well, Brazilian cocktail. Yeah, I mean, you know, well, Brazil is a big part of our life. I, I lived in Brazil for 10 years. Right. My husband is Brazilian. Yes. And my company, our company is all about Brazil. So, um, yeah, it's a big part of our life. And, and Wallace tends to be a master caipirinha maker. Okay. I know he's also your camera operator right now. So yeah, come in. Just for a second. He'll come in and say, just say hello for a second. Wallace is dying to... That's okay. Wallace, Wallace, I just want like in a future season. Hello. <laughs> hello. Wallace could do a feijoada with you. <laughs> oh, that's a little too complicated for me, Wallace. Don't for you think? Me too. <laughs> you know me. I don't think I I could make a cocktail though. Could you teach right. me how to make a perfect caipirinha? Yes, we can do okay. it together. Easy. Okay. <laughs> We are going to schedule that in a future season of Cooking with Liz. So, all right. Looking forward to it. Okay. All right. So, this is good, Mark. You have, uh, we've gone through the recipe. I think I understand what's important. I have confidence. I, I'm sensing that this is going to really work. It's like your type of recipe. Okay. You just have to get over the strict uh, measurements. Yeah. I don't think, you know, and just go uh, taste as you go along. This would be a good new process. The thing is, I only it. just learned about the strict measurements. So ten, se so I took ten seasons learning, and now you're telling me to throw them away. <laughs> okay, that, that's the that's <laughs> measurements. <laughs> okay, that's so you. That's on that note. I think I'm going to have to say goodbye to you. Carry on with the rest of the episode. Oh. So you just need to leave the meeting.
and then I'm going to do. I will leave on, on uh, Chow, and uh, hopefully we'll see. Maybe I'll see you on Sunday to see how it all turned out. Yes, yes. Let's work that out Sunday. Okay. Thank Bye. you. Okay. So now I am going to. Okay. Well, Mark is just the greatest, isn't he? Okay. So now I got to figure out how to go back with all of these screens, people. I'm just. It's just really hard. So now I don't. I have to go back to where I see all of your comments. Here we go. Okay, here's Facebook now. Okay, so now I'm back. Uh, <clears throat> wow, 70 comments already. So, all right. So, you know, Mark is one of my dearest, dearest friends in the whole world. And what we did not tell you, or what I did not tell you when I had Mark on the line is that in the very early seasons of Cooking with Liz, not only was he mocking me here in the comments with, you can go back and read those, but he was, he was back channeling suggestions to Leon and Julie that they should assign me things like beef Wellington or baked Alaska. He really wanted to see me go, go big. So I'm very grateful to Mark that after watching me for 10 seasons, he realizes, let's start with Mama Capra's marinara. So, and that's a good friend right? Someone who understands, though they would love to see you further humiliate yourself. Actually, it would be much more fun to make his mother's uh, marinara sauce together. So, so that's what we're going to do. I'll do that. You know, the way this works on, on Saturday, I'll do the mise en place. So there will be, I'll be the crushing, I'll be doing all the stuff. And then Sunday, I will be serving the marinara with the linguine, Maybe I'll have time. To, I can't promise I'm going to make the Caesar salad because I feel like marinara is the main assignment here. So I'm going to do that. So before before I go, you know, it's a season premiere. So I like to at the season premiere just play a quick round of um, what's in the drawer list, right? What's in the drawer? So I'm going to go over here. Now, this is my kitchen junk drawer. You've met my kitchen junk drawer before. I'm just going to show you what's happening over here. Okay, this is so hard to switch between the... Okay, so that's what the drawer looks like. I'm just going to reach in there. What we do here, you know, I reach in and I pull out whatever... What, and then you help me figure out what it is, right? Like, it's a junk drawer. So who knows? It could be something really obvious or something that we do not recognize at all. So hold on. I'm reaching in. Hold on. Uh, okay. 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 All right. What do I have here? Okay. Now, okay. Now I need to go back to. Okay. So, um, it's just so hard because when I look at myself in the Facebook group, which is where your comments are, I'm like ten seconds behind. So anyway, here's what I found. So two things. Uh, this obviously is shelf liner, but. It looks like when I got to that drawer, I just ran out of the desire to actually line the shelf. Most of my other, yeah, I'm looking around here. All, like, all of my other shelves are actually lined. So I feel like I got to that drawer and I thought, it's a direct drawer. Who, need, who needs to bother to line a junk drawer? So I just, uh, okay, so I never lined that drawer. So that's, maybe I could do that. But also wrapped up in that was this. What does this say? I have no idea what this is. Last week, you helped me recognize that like crab lobster cracker thing. Does anyone know what this is? Oh, you know, <laughs> okay, this is not cooking related at all. I'm just looking, the brand on this says four paws. So you know what this is? There was a moment where I thought I could, I could clip Hooper's, um, uh, claws. I could, uh, I could do that myself. And so I bought this and I tried it once and it did not go well, did it, Hooper? It did not, it did not go well. And so, um, so yeah, I just threw it in the junk drawer, but okay. I know now this is not a cooking implement. This is no, nothing to do with cooking, only like bad dog grooming, which I'm, I'm never going to use this again. So why do we do that? Why do we save things we're never going to use again? I, I, okay, I got to get rid of this. Okay, so that is pretty much all of the excitement for the premiere. I want, what else did I want to, I mentioned that, okay, 
we talked about the ladle. People commented on that. We talked about the fact that fun boxes. Okay, so season 10. Season 10 is underway. Uh, very excited. So on Saturday, the mise en place, that's when the serious sauce making is going to happen. You'll see that. And then Sunday, when you come back at noon Pacific time, I will be, that's when I'll just cook the linguine and serve the sauce. It would be super great to have someone at the window to do that, to, to taste the sauce. But if it's me and I'm talking to Mark, that would also be super great. So we don't know, right? We have no idea what's gonna happen. Um, did I have anything? Okay, remember, remember what makes cooking with Liz uh, so unique is the live element that it's in real time correction. So Saturday, when you're watching me do stuff, feel free to tell me whatever you need to tell me. And, uh, and I feel like most of all, I need to maintain focus because I love Mama Capra. And the last thing I want to do is do a bad job on her sauce, even though I know she's not going to taste it, but she'll know. I'm sure Mark will show her the video. So I'm going to maintain focus. So that's, that's that. Anyway, okay, so there you have it. Let me see if there were any other comments because I was really not looking at the comments this whole time um, because I had the other screen up. Anything else that I needed to comment on here? My goodness. Okay, Luann, it's all good. Thank you. You should put a TV table. Let's see. Uh, let's see. It's all good. La la la. Okay. The. Okay. Okay, I think that's good. Um, thank you so much for playing along. Season 10, this is exciting. And so now I'm, you know, I've got the tech stuff going on. I've got the cooking going on. I would, I would say that my, my sous chef is really not pulling his weight. He's pretty much asleep on the job. I gave him a credit this week again. I don't know if you guys ever saw this, but, you know, uh, you know, I'm the cook and I, He's a sous chef. I almost made him a sous cook because if I'm if I'm only a cook, because I don't think I'm a chef, then you know whatever whatever he is. Anyway, it's a satellite sister spinoff. Um, I'm happy to be here and have a little fun with you during the current unpleasantness. So I'll see you back here um, noon Pacific time Saturday for the for the mise en place. So you know we always end with the the clapping. I'll see you back here very soon. Now, remember, I learned the hard way the other day about how to turn how to turn this off. It's basically just close the laptop, Liz. Just close the laptop.